Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 498. Four, nine or eight. Saturday, Sept uh, Saturday, July, July the 21st, 2018. July the 21st, 2018, Saturday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Unbelievable amount of things to get to today. I'm going to have to talk fast, which means you're going to have to listen fast. <laughs> Okay, I'll do the best I can to get through everything. There's just so much to talk about here today. Um, okay, so let's get started and uh, we'll tick them off. Oh, by the way, I'm going to say thank you to everyone in the comment section. I don't know if you know this or not, but as much as a lot of people think that I come out here and do videos every day to try to educate the masses, which I do uh, to the best of my ability, I just want you to know that uh, in the process of doing this, when I go through those comment sections on all these videos that I do, I'm getting quite educated myself. It's a two-way street. Uh, people constantly leaving links, people constantly leaving comments, uh, going back in history, pointing out things that maybe I didn't know or maybe I haven't mentioned. And so I am getting as educated by you as people out there are, are being educated by me doing these videos. It is a, a cooperative effort here, and so I deeply appreciate all the comments uh, all the efforts you make uh, to take the time to type in the comments and provide the incredible research, background, history, and facts that help support the argument that you're making, which uh, could be an argument that agrees or disagrees with me. Either way, it's fine, and I appreciate all your efforts. Thank you so very much. Paul Erickson. <clears throat> Paul Erickson is U.S. person number one. Uh, he has been named as U.S. person number one in this indictment against this Russian girl, uh, Maria Butina. So he is, Paul Erickson is U.S. person number one, and uh, <clears throat> he is the man who has been living with, uh, recently living with, uh, Maria Butina. She is the indicted Russian girl. Uh, of course, Mr. Erickson is laughing off the allegations that Butina was trying to influence the NRA. Um, and, of course, Butina is being accused of being a Russian agent. A lot of people think, okay, well, this is probably just another uh, one of Mueller's um, stunts, one of his political stunts. So uh, it appears that Mr. Erickson, uh, who is a key person here, uh, because that's who she's been living with, uh, who she's cl most closely collaborated with. He is a sort of a person who gives her access to a lot of people within the RNC and the NRA community. So... It doesn't appear that they're targeting him at this point. Uh, he is listed as U.S. person number one. But he is saying, at this point, he's laughing off the allegations and saying it's basically BS. Something tells me Mr. Erickson is probably right. The FBI reportedly has a tape of Trump talking to Michael Cohen about a payoff to Playboy model Karen McDougal. McDougal had an affair with Trump in 2006. It's being reported by the New York Times. The tape was seized when the FBI Southern District of New York raided Cohen's offices on the advice of Uncle Bob the Executioner and the Hillary donor posse. So, a couple questions here. <laughs> Who leaked that to the New York Times? Somebody on Uncle Bob's team. That's who. Or someone at the DOJ. Now, if this would have been the Rotten Reverend Clinton or Obama or an establishment person, they'd be tearing the DOJ, turning it upside down to find out who leaked this damaging information. But because it's Trump, it's okay. This is weaponizing, this is weaponizing the DOJ and the FBI against Trump. This is the continued effort, as I told you yesterday, that will never, ever stop. And if it's not stopped, if we don't stop them, they will take down Trump. You can take that to the bank. Eventually, they will hit on something, believe me, whether it's true or not. Or the overwhelming amount of fake evidence that they produce that a lot of people believe will just become overwhelming. It will paralyze his presidency. This is, this is what they're trying to do. If they can't actually find him in a crime, they just want to paralyze him to the point where he can no longer have uh, execute the power of the office. This is part of the setup. Now, as far as Trump paying off um, uh, and his lawyer talking about making a payment to this woman or whatever, um, that's not illegal. That's not a crime. It would only be a crime if the money that was used to pay her off was money that was raised uh, from a, in a political campaign or a political fund. If political campaign contributions were used, then that would be a crime. 
But at this point, I don't think anybody believes that Trump needed, uh, I mean, he, he bankrolled his own campaign. <laughs> so to say that he used other people's money, uh, campaign donations, I mean, he bankrolled about 90% of his campaign. He took very, uh, very, very little money, most of it, in fact, all of it from small donors. I don't know if he took any corporate money or not, certainly not much. So there's really no there there. This is just another uh, of, the, of the many little stories that ultimately have no hook in them whatsoever, but which CNN and MSNBC and ABC and all the rest can blast on the front page of their paper or their news uh, network, and they can ride this thing for a few more days until Uncle Bob can shit another one of these things out of his ass. That's basically what this is. Pay it no attention. It's disgusting. The petition to expel Mad Max has exceeded 100,000 signatures on White, whitehouse.gov. The petition to expel Mad Maxine Waters has exceeded 100,000 signatures. This coming in the wake of a bunch of her supporters burning the American flag and calling for communism or something. Uh, so there you go, Mad Max has got her own problems. And now she's got the Oath Keepers coming into her district and she sent out a message telling her supporters not to mess with these people. Why? Because they're armed, number one. Number two, they're ex-military and ex-cops. Some are current cops as well. Probably not the group you want to mess with. The number of Americans that believe Russia as a biggest threat is so small, it cannot even be represented with a number. This coming from a recent poll. You cannot believe this. I looked at this poll, and they asked people what the, what the, what the most important issues are. And they list about 30, 35 things in a list. Russia is not even on the list. No one even brought it up or mentioned it. There's a lot of things on the list, not a single one of them Russia. The two top issues uh, are number one, the economy, and number two, immigration. Immigration suddenly gone from like number 20 to number one to number two just in the past six months or so since the Democrats have decided to make it a uh, uh, a major issue. Of course, Trump made it a major issue in the campaign, but he's talking about controlling the immigration, sealing the border. But when the Democrats went nuts and started talking about, we know we need open borders, we need to let all these people come in, legal or not, uh, whoever they are, we don't need to know, just let them into the country. Uh, that's when the issue got really heated, took it up a bunch of notches. And right now, the immigration issue is the number two issue behind the economy. If the economy is the number one issue and immigration is the number two issue and Russia does not, it doesn't even register enough response to even show up in the poll or even rep be represented with a number, that is not good news for the Democrats. That is not good news for the Democrats. It's great news for Trump and the Republicans if the Republicans are smart enough to know how to use it, which they're not, but hopefully Trump is. <clears throat> Unbelievable. Refugees from war-torn Syria are now fleeing New Jersey because of the violence and the high taxes. <laughs> well, you know it's bad. Yeah, well, when they take you from war-torn Syria and they drop you in the heart of New Jersey into, into the liberal Mecca, uh, yeah, I mean, it's probably culture shock. You went from a horrible, horrible place in Syria, a war-torn country, uh, probably a very dangerous place, a lot of a lot of problems, just a horrible uh, situation to be in if you are in Syria, and then they drop you into a uh, a uh, liberal run uh, place like New Jersey. That's even worse. <laughs> it's like going out of the frying pan into the fire. Oh, and they're getting ready in New Jersey to start taxing tap water. They're going to tax people in New Jersey on tap water. They tax you on everything in New Jersey. Get out while you can. CNN, Chris Cuomo, claims President Trump hates America and he says he can prove it. Oh yeah? And how did he go about proving it? He says it because Trump's hatred of the media proves it. <laughs> oh boy, you talk about owning yourself? Oh my God. Chris, have you seen the media's approval ratings? The last time I saw Trump's ratings are somewhere between 43 and 49 percent, whichever poll you want to look at. The approval ratings uh, of uh, the media in general is below, uh, what, around 10 percent or less? And CNN is the worst of the worst. <laughs> the absolute worst of the worst. Chris, you don't even have a million people who tune into you. Not even a million. And most of those are because 
uh, viewers are because of all your shits in airports, in bus stations, in public places. If you took that away, CNN probably wouldn't even have 200,000 viewers. Nobody likes you, Chris. You're way, way more unpopular than Trump. And when Trump says that, uh, that the media is fake news, it is. And when he says that the media sucks, he's right. And a lot more people agree with him than agree with you, Chris. You moron. The Washington Post. <laughs> uh, Eugene Robinson, he's been writing uh, liberal uh, uh, smack for uh, 25, 30 years. I've been laughing at this, at this asshat for years. So he's written an article in the Washington Post uh, titled, God Bless the Deep State. Uh, he's calling for the deep state uh, to reverse or mitigate the damage of the president. Yes, that's right, uh, Eugene. We have elections, and if you don't like the way the election turned out, then you think that the deep state should then uh, take out the duly elected president because you disagree with him. I wonder if you feel that if you'd have felt that way when Obama was president or or Slick Willie. Hmm. I'm thinking not. But the funny thing about that is that for the past quite a few months, uh, more than that actually, that we've been talking about the deep state, the secret government, whatever you want to call it, the shadow government, who cares, whatever name that you have for it, the left-wing media has been denying it and laughing and saying, oh, there's no such thing as a deep state, there's no such thing as a shadow government, that's just crazy bullshit. Really? Really? Well, I encourage you left-wing nutcases, including Eugene Robinson, to go back and watch the first real hardcore documentary documentary that ever really came out that saw the light of day to the public. It was put out by Bill Moyer, former assistant press secretary of LBJ and longtime um, uh, uh, reporter on PBS. Bill Moyer did quite the uh, uh, bit of investigative journalism and exposed the deep state. Now, at the time, he used the term shadow government. If you have not seen the 20-year-old documentary by Bill Moyers, a hardcore, he's a socialist, a socialist. So 20 years ago, uh, your socialist icon, Bill Mo Moyer, who was part of the LBJ administration, did a uh, expose uh, about a two-hour documentary called The Shadow Government where he laid out exactly what the shadow government is <clears throat> and the whole history of it, Eugene and all you lefties out there. Now you deny, for first you deny for the longest time and you say we're all crazy people for talking about a deep state and a shadow government and now you're calling on the very entity that you say didn't exist to try and uh, mitigate and reverse uh, the elections because you don't like the way it turned out, Eugene. You're an asshole. Eugene. Mike Pompeo says the Russians have been meddling in U.S. elections for decades. <laughs> Rodenstein, <laughs> Rodenstein says it's not a new phenomenon. Uh, he says the KGB paid someone to write a book in 1963 claiming that the FBI and the CIA assassinated JFK. <laughs> man, these guys have just... Man, he's good. So you want to know? Right there you know. All you want to know about Rodenstein, you, you just learned right there. Now, he's talking about Mark Lane, is who he's talking about. Uh, and no, the KGB wasn't paying Mark Lane uh, to write that. That was That's an old uh, slander that's that's been debunked so many times. It's ridiculous by Mr. Lane himself, other people who know him. Mark Lane was not being paid by the KGB. Uh you know, so uh, and he and he was one of the very first real journalists to do a hardcore dive and take that risk into the JFK thing. And of course, the CIA it was all propaganda. It was CIA propaganda uh, uh, campaign that they ran against Mark Lane to say, "Oh, it's uh, his book about JFK and, and the assassination involving the intelligence community." That's the Russian KGB is behind it. <laughs> you know what Mike Pompeo and what Rodenstein never said anything about. They never said anything about all the meddling in the uh, in the elections that the U.S. does in countries all over the world. Why? Because in their mind, uh, it, it, no one else is allowed to do this. Only the U.S. Because we're the exceptional nation. We can meddle in other people's people's elections because we are the good ones. We are the uh, uh, true ones. We are the uh, the angels of the world. Uh, we don't have any devils in our government in our deep state. No, no, no. So we're allowed to go and overthrow governments, meddle in everyone else's elections. That's okay because we're America. But anyone else does it, can't do that. It's wrong. The the U.S. intelligence community will never admit the shit that they do. Never. 
and Rodenstein, uh, you know, to say that the CIA, uh, you know, saying that, uh, he's basically saying that it's a conspiracy theory uh, that uh, the CIA and the FBI had a role to play in the assassination of JFK. Everyone knows they had a role to play in the assassination of JFK. If they didn't, Mr. Rodenstein, then why don't you come off the fucking documents that tell us that? Because that's what they tell us, and they tell us a lot more about George, George Herbert Walker Bush, his role in all of that. I could sit here and do a three-hour freaking video on, on George W. George Herbert Walker Bush's um, uh, role in the JFK assassination, which is big, believe me, which is major. Mr. Rodenstein, if it's all a hoax, if it's all just crazy conspiracy theories, release the remaining documents. Trump said he would do it, but once they got down to the real critical documents, they released some, but once they got to the real good stuff, that's when Rodenstein and uh, Ray and all the rest of them came to, oh, you can't release this. This is too damaging, too damaging to the country, too damaging to uh, national security, too damaging. No, it's not. It's just damaging because it tells the truth about the FBI, the CIA, and a bunch of other deep staters of, the, of that time who were involved in the assassination of the president. 99% of the people in the country know this. Uh, it's not big secret. The deep state continues to lie. They're the these are exactly the people who you catch them with their hand in the cookie jar, cookie crumbs all over their face, cookies all down. They're chewing on cookies. They're swallowing cookies. They're spitting out cookies. You catch them red-handed, and they look at you and they tell you, "Oh, well, I'm sorry. I was just uh, oh, I was actually putting cookies into the cookie jar. Oh, well, then why are they all over your face? Why are you chewing on them? Oh, well, I was testing them out just to make sure they're fresh. It doesn't matter when you catch these people red-handed. They just keep lying. Sick of it." Not letting him get away with it, Rodenstein. Cindy McCain will take her husband's place as senator. Yeah, uh, this is always happens uh, when a senator dies. Usually the wife or husband or whatever do uh, finish out that term. Uh, but then she would have to stand for re-election if she wanted to actually run and hold that seat, which I'm not sure, sure she will. But what can we expect from Cindy McCain? Well, we can expect exactly what we got from John McCain. Senator Magoo. Senator Songbird Magoo, uh, his wife will be Mrs. Senator Songbird Magoo, and we'll probably think, well, how would how would Johnny have? What would Johnny have done? Uh, well, he would have fucked the country, Cindy, and that's what you'll continue to do. Uncle Bob, Uncle Bob the Executioner Mueller has sent a subpoena to Kristen Davis, the Manhattan Madam, who went to prison in connection with the scandal that took down Elliot Spitzer. Davis worked for Roger Stone for a decade. Mueller is targeting Stone as part of his witch hunt. He's the next guy that uh, Mueller is going to be uh, uh, needling. Now, Mueller is, of course, out of control. We know that the Mueller probe is about protecting the Clintons, the DOJ, the FBI, the Obama administration, and the deep state crimes. That's what Uncle Bob is doing. And he must keep it going. And so his next target is Stone. Bernie Sanders. His top strategy guy was in contact with a former Russian intelligence agent before joining the campaign. Todd Devine joined Sanders' campaign in 2014. His name came up in association with Manafort. Uh, Mueller seems to have no interest whatsoever in Mr. Devine or commie Bernie Sanders. Only Trump and people around him. Yeah, and uh, and commie Bernie uh, recently introduced a measure, <laughs> introduced a measure to censor Russia for meddling in the elections. <laughs> Can you believe commie Bernie? He's insane. So he had no problem with the rotten Reverend Clinton and her deep state friends screwing him, but not just him, all of his supporters. And, 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 and did he do what most other people would have done? Sue the rotten Reverend Clinton and the DNC for the, what they did to him and his supporters? No, because Bernie doesn't give a shit. He doesn't give a shit. Certainly doesn't give a shit about his supporters because they worked awfully hard for him, donated lots of money, and then when they, on two or three different occasions, tried to go uh, take the DNC and the rotten Reverend Clinton to court, Bernie offered no help whatsoever. Did not give them any support whatsoever. Said nothing on their behalf whatsoever. He would not stand up for the people who fought for him. He is a coward. He is a pussy and a commie. And he brings this measure to the floor. Rand Paul shot it down, by the way. 
Rand Paul shot it down. Oh, and of course we find out that after the Rotten Reverend screws Bernie, and more than Bernie, but screwed all those people that worked hard for him, donated all that money and believed in his cause, that, that they're misguided, but they're, they were well intended. They, they did not deserve to be screwed the way they were. Uh, Bernie, I don't give a shit, but his supporters were treated very, very wrongly, in my opinion. Um, and so, what do we learn about uh, Bernie? Well, as soon as, he, as soon as he got cheated, and he knew he got cheated, what did he do? He signed on to the Rotten Reverend Clinton, went out and campaigned for her. Went out and campaigned for her after she screwed him and all his supporters. And then what happens? Oh, he, he ends up, a couple months later, we find out he bought a very expensive second vacation home and a very expensive European sport sedan. Looks to me like Bernie, the commie, got paid off by the Rotten Reverend. That's what it looks like to me. I could be wrong. And there are still a bunch of damn fools out there who want Bernie in 2020. Gluttons for punishment. Uh-oh. James Clapper, the unwittingly, James Clapper, the unwitting idiot, unwittingly, uh, went on CNN and said that, quote, Obama set off the sequence of events that led to the Mueller investigation by tasking the intelligence community assignment. Let me say that one more time. Let me say it one more time. Listen very, very closely. James Clapper, uh, the unwitting idiot, unwittingly told CNN that, quote, Obama set off the sequence of events that led to the Mueller investigation by tasking the intelligence community assignment. What more do you need? Carl Gaddis. We talked about him, what, about two or three, three weeks ago or so? When we discovered this FBI, NSB, the National Security Branch. And how did we discover the National Security Branch of the FBI? It's when I was talking about the six agency task force that John Brennan set up, which included Clapper, which included Strzok. And I was telling you that the guy who was the head of this FBI NSB, Carl Gaddis. <clears throat> he has now called it quits. Gaddis has called it quits. He was, of course, part of the Sixth Agency Task Force. And we learn that he was best friends with Andy McCabe. Very close friends. They've been friends for a long time. They were roommates at Duke. They vacationed together. Very, very, very close friends. So now he is gone. Carl Gaddis, very suspicious character, head of the FBI, NSB, which was part of the Sixth Agency Task Force, which was involved in the early stages of setting up the coup. Yesterday, I made a video. I think most of you took it seriously. Some people may not understand the impact of what I was trying to say, but what I was trying to say yesterday is that we are in a war, a death struggle. A war to the, uh, it's a war to the death. It's a fight to the death. Someone is going to lose and someone is going to uh, win. Someone's going to be killed and someone is going to survive. This is a death match. It's either going to be Trump or the deep state. This is not, uh, you know, duke it out for a while and then go back to your neutral corners, shake hands and uh, go back and call it a day. No, this is a fight to the death. And this is coming down to the midterms. If the Dems win, you can be guaranteed they will push for impeachment and try to remove Trump from office or destroy his presidency. If they lose, which I think is likely, that will put the deep state into a very difficult situation. They will be desperate and they will do what desperate people do. So if Trump, the Republicans win, Trump and the Republicans win the midterms, it's gonna become very, very dangerous, is what I'm trying to say. Because I wouldn't be surprised if the deep state arranges for Trump to take a little cruise through Dealey Plaza. They will be desperate. This is, this is a fight to the death, my friends. 
you know, when I watch the Democrats, the left-wing lunatics, you just want to slap these people. They're so effing stupid. Because the people who they are supporting, the side that they've taken, are the exact same people that took down Bernie. And if Bernie would have won, they would have done the same to him that they're doing to Trump. So if the Democrats ever were to elect an anti-establishment candidate like Trump, but someone more on the left, like a left-wing populist, then they would get the exact same treatment uh, and the left-wing loonies are too stupid to realize this. Now, I know a lot of you send these videos to your left-wing friends, which is great. That's exactly what you should do. You can't convince all of them, but if we can get a few, that's better than none. But what you lefties have to understand, I'm speaking directly to you now, you left-wing lunatics. Think about this for just a moment. Trump was the anti-establishment uh, Republican, and Bernie was the anti-establishment Democrat. Bernie got cheated by the deep state, and they beat him. Trump got cheated by the deep state, and but they didn't beat him. Trump survived. He won. But you can see they haven't stopped. They're still going after him. And now you left-wing loonies are taking the side of the deep state. The same people who screwed you are now trying to screw Trump, and you're helping them. If your guy would have won, they would be screwing Bernie. But think about the future. The future. Because someday you may get a left-wing populist. And what do you think they're going to do to that left-wing populist? The same thing they're doing to Trump. You left-wing loonies need to get your head out of your asses and wake up and get on the right side of the fight. You don't want to be on the wrong side of this fight. This is real. And if they want to take it all the way to where I think that they'll take this thing, they could end up with a real war internally. And you don't want to be on the other side of that, uh, left-wing loonies. I can assure you that. You know why? We got all the guns. The cops and the military. You'll beat, you'll get beat, and you'll get beat badly. Join the right side of the team. Get your head out of your ass and understand that this is not uh, Trump or left versus right. This is not Democrat versus Republican. This is deep state versus the people. Deep state versus the people. Get on the right side of the team. Wake up. Emmett Tyrell, editor of the American Spectator, wrote a very powerful story. It's on the American Spectator, and I think you should read it. And he talks about why Trump should declassify. Yes, he should, but I think he should do more than that. I think he should appoint a special commission. And yes, I read the comments once again. Yeah, they'll only support it if I'm on the commission. That would be great. I'd love to be on the commission. I would certainly volunteer. Uh, but it needs to be a citizen, a mostly citizen commission. You certainly want people on there like William Binney and other people like that, former military people, uh, just uh, civilian people, uh, not members of the deep state, not former members of the government or anything like that. Um, so, uh, I mean, ele the elected uh, government officials. But uh, anyway, yeah, let me just cover a couple things that uh, Emmett I Tyrell arrived at. Uh, there's specific key things which Nunez and the others are trying to get, which they're not going to get. They're ne the deep state, the, the State Department, uh, the FBI, the DOJ, they're not going to come off the evidence that's going to incriminate them. They're going to sit on that forever. They'll give you a billion pages of garbage. They ain't coming off the stuff that will incriminate them, right? Right. That's why Trump needs to declassify. I believe at some point he will. Because I believe Trump at some point is going to figure out, if he doesn't, if he already hasn't figured it out, that this is a fight to the death. And they're coming for his head. Make no mistake about it. They're coming for his head. And I think there's some members of Congress that understand this. I would fully expect at some point, if it hasn't happened already, that certain members of these committees investigating this are going to go to Trump and say, look, we're doing every damn thing we can. We're being stonewalled. We're not getting what we want. And you're the target here, you know, and the country as well. Mr. President, you've got to declassify. You have got to get involved. You have got to get in involved. It's a deep state and you're the target. You have got to start fighting back. You, They are using every tool they have in their toolbox. And Mr. President, you're not using any of the tools in your tool toolbox. One of them is to declassify. The other is to appoint a special commission, which you appoint. The individual you appoint and you decide their mandate. That's what Trump has to do. And I certainly hope 
that after the midterm, I understand why he wouldn't do it now. I understand it's politically sensitive, but it's very, very dangerous not to. It's quite the risk to run another three or four months from where we are now and to, and, and to continue to let this go on. I, I, I wish he would just, you know, throw his cards down on the table and roll the dice, man, and go and go and go for the win. Uh, you know, I can understand that being politically safe, uh, waiting to after the midterms, but this situation is very, very dangerous right now. Very, very dangerous. And, um, but if he doesn't do it before the midterms, he better, after the midterms, he better start declassifying things. He better appoint a commission or he better do something. And he needs to can Sessions, Rodenstein, Ray, and Coates. They all need to go. He needs to clean the house. He needs to clean the house, and he needs to come on TV and address the nation and say, hey, here is what I believe happened. I think there's overwhelming evidence. I'm putting together a commission to get to the bottom of it. We're going to find out exactly what did happen in 2016, and I think it was an attempted coup. That's what I think. And I think he just has to come out and be bold and tell the truth, and then he has to do all the things and expose it, get it out there. If it's not true, let them prove it's not true. But right now, I, I, I don't think well, we're too far into this thing. It is a fight to the death. The deep state's going to use every tool they have against him, and he's going to have to open up his toolbox. He's going to have to break out the tools, and he's going to have to use everything he's got because I'm telling you, this is danger. we are in dangerous, dangerous territory right now. Uncle Bob's not backing off. The deep state's not backing off. And they will arrange something for him like they did uh, Mr. Kennedy in 1963 after he, uh, if, if he wins in 2020 or possibly even before. I absolutely guarantee you that they have plans or they're making plans. Brennan has uh, still got his top secret security clearance. He still has a lot of people inside the CIA um, that are loyal to him. Just like what we had when Kennedy fired... Uh, Alan Dulles, head of the CIA after the Bay of Pigs thing, who uh, who was it that helped organize uh, Kennedy's assassination? It was Alan Dulles. He was deeply involved in that. And of course, then he got put on the Warren Commission on, the, on part of the cover-up. So Emmett Tyrell of the American Spectator states the following. Trump should declassify all communications between Strzok and Brennan. What's he talking about? He's talking about the documents that will give us some insight into the multi-agency task force, six-agency task force, special working group. It's, it's being called many different names. Rand Paul called it this working group. Whatever you want to call it, you know what I'm talking about. This is where it all began. It began with Brennan and Strzok and this multi-agency or six-agency task force. That's when the coup began. That's where the roots of it are. You need to get the documents. Mr. Terrell is absolutely 100% correct. You need to declassify all communications between Strzok and Brennan. Next, he says, we should declassify any docs, documents that shed light on Brennan's working group at Langley. He's talking about the Six Agency Task Force. He understands exactly what I understand. That is the root. That's how you, um, that's how you unearth this thing. That's how you expose this thing. That is how we win this fight. That's why I talk so much about the deep state, uh, the uh, Six Agency Task Force. It's got to become a term that everybody, when you ask anybody in the street, they go, oh yeah, I've heard about the Six Agency Task Force. Right now, nobody knows. Zero, less than 1% probably. It's got to be on the lips of every American. They have to know that this was put together, who did it, and what it was all about. That needs to come into the public purview very quickly and very clearly. And that's what uh, Emmett Tyrell is talking about here. Declassify any documents that shed light on Brennan's working group at Langley. When did the group begin? We believe it was late March of 2015. Who participated? Well, we know for sure Brennan, of course, Clapper, uh, and Peter's been stroking us. And, of course, uh, our good friend, uh, what's his name? Uh, just resigned from the, from the FBI. Yes, Mr. Gaddis. Mr. Gaddis would have been a part of that as well. He needs to declassify the documents that shed light on the internal discussions or debates about whether or not to open the probe of the Trump campaign. Yes, indeed. That would be very important to do. He must declassify those documents as well. Finally, he needs to declassify the documents related to John Brennan's generated leak to Senator Harry Reid. Absolutely. Only Trump can do this. He better do this.